Hello and welcome back to Backward Point Podcast. I am your co-host Bashar. And today's episode, we had the founder of UZ Sports, Uzair Minhas on the podcast, who notably sponsors Shaheen Afridi, Shahid Afridi, Hardest Rove, and Naseem Shah, who also used the bats to hit those iconic sixes against Afghanistan at the Asia Cup last year. We spoke to Uzair about how he got into the cricket manufacturing business, how he got in touch with some of the players uh, to sponsor them, uh, what it's what it takes to sponsor a player, what's a good bat, what's a bad bat. Uh, we also spoke about what the aspirations of UZ are for the future uh, and just some general stories about um, cricket bats. He actually brought in Shahid Afridi, Shahin Afridi's bat. Uh, for, to show it to us, I, I even pest tested it out in the uh, in my garage, and it was the ping was on it. it was so good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, the description to UZ's website is in our bio. So is the links to our Discord and our Patreon. Make sure to check those out uh, and let UZ know that Backward Point sent you. So hope you guys enjoy this episode, and we'll see you on the next one. Uzair Minas, UC Sports, our first in-person guest in our home studio. Welcome and thank you for taking the trip down all the way from Oakville, which is like 70, 80 kilometers, right? Yeah, like 100 plus kilometers. But thank you so much for having me. It's a wonderful setup, to be honest. Uh, and I'm honored to be here. You are the second most requested guest on the podcast. I have literally gotten emails from people like, hey, can you please get Uzi on the podcast? Very high in demand. No, man. I, I don't know who <laughs> those guys are, but I guess there are some good people around here. Maybe you have a paid PR team. <laughs> I wish I did. I wish I did. I, I wish I was Shoaib Jutt. <laughs> oh, I wish. All right. I, immediately, we know that this podcast is going to be kicking. Uh, like like Bashar said, thanks thanks for coming. It's, it's actually a lot of fun. We, we, we hung out a lot during the GT20. We saw each yeah. other a lot. And yeah. uh, you've brought some bats with you as well. well. We'll talk about them as well and the different dimensions and all that. Yeah. But it's just, it's going to be, it's going to be a wonderful podcast and I hope you have some fun. Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> Let's start off with the origin story. How did you start off or think of starting the UZ Sports Cricket Equipment Company? To be very honest, it's been a long journey when, when it comes to cricket equipment. So I've always been fond of cricket bats and I've been collecting cricket bats ever since I was in university. And I'm not glorifying, but I had cricket bats from each and every manufacturer in the world. And I'm not talking about the mainstream ones only. I'm talking about the niche, the boutique brands as well. Yeah. So, and I knew all of those bat makers. And that was just my hobby, right? And then in 2019-ish, so I have a friend, Sri Lankan friend, Lakshan. This guy came up to me like, why don't you just brand it? And then I spoke to my English friend, right? Steve, I'm like, what name should we get? Or should I get, basically? He said, UZ. He said, just keep it two letters. I'm like, okay. And then that's basically how it was conceived. I initially got two bats. And then the Sri Lankan friend, he bought both. And then he sold one. And that's where it kickstarted. And then the maple leaf did not just originate because it's a Canadian identity. But if you basically, my, my maternal grandfather is from Jammu Kashmir. And I, I'm very, very close to him. And uh, so the national tree of Jammu Kashmir is called Chinar. Yes. And if you look at Chinar, the, the leaves are basically maple leaves. So that's how the maple leaf connection became. Uh, and that's where it started from. And then, you know, it just been about just being consistent and all of that. And a lot of people, you know, initially when UZ started, I, I reached out to a couple of Canadian cricketers. I'm like, okay, you know what, you want to use UZ? They're like, no, 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 we want a big brand. Right? Okay. I'm like, okay. Right at that time, this is 2019. I'm like, okay. And then Nikhil Dutta was the first one, yeah. right? Uh, and then he started using it. And then GT20 happened in 2019 as well. Yeah. Before that, that was the two. last one before the COVID. Yes, season two. And Nikhil used it. And then GT20 ended. And then the first biggest signing was Tikandar Raza. Right. And I think during that time, he was kind of like sidelined from Zimbabwe cricket team, the national team. And then he played two T10 tournaments. Back then, T10 wasn't that big as it is now. But those ones were, I think, I don't know where the first one was, but the second one was in Qatar. Okay, yeah. So he, he scored some runs in the Qatar one, and he was just using UZ in those two series and those two tournaments. And then after that, 
2020 started January, I think, was the under-19 World Cup. Right. And then there were a couple a couple of Pakistani boys who had UZ. Qasim Akram was one yeah, of them. Yeah, Qasim Akram was one of them. Ali S1, right? Qasim Akram being there the prominent from the start. One. He yeah, was the captain the prominent. of the team, right? No, not in that World Cup. Okay. In 2022, he was the captain. Okay. And then PSL happened, then got disrupted because of COVID. And I was in Pakistan at that time. And I got stuck in Pakistan and I was there for six months. And uh, I knew Naseem Shah. So uh, wait, how, how does one just know Naseem Shah? How does one <laughs> how does know this, Naseem Shah? You, Naseem you Shah need a, a mutual, yeah. mutual friend, right? So okay. I had a mutual friend. He is a fitness trainer. He was a fitness trainer with the national team. Now he's at the academy. I see. Okay. So because of him, I used to go to NCA a lot. National okay. Cricket Academy, which is now known as NHPC. So I used to go there a lot, meet the players. Salam, you know, hi, how are you? And all Network. of that. Network. Network. Get yeah. some FaceTime with them. FaceTime with them at that time, right? Uh, I was much younger at that time. So <laughs> FaceTime with them. And these guys were, uh, you know, the team wasn't star at that time. He was being injured and he was in and out of the uh, academy as well. Is this so, before or after his test debut? This is before, uh, this is right after his test debut. Okay. This is 2020. After the test debut was in 2019. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. It was 2019 in Australia. So it was after. So, and then I'm like, Nassim start using it and all of that. And then he, he got, uh, he, he got, you know, sponsored by UZ or he signed UZ. And then Pakistan toured England at that time. This is the COVID series, yeah. right? Yeah. So Naseem and Shaheen, they were roommates back then. Uh, so they, And then that's how I got in touch with Shaheen. So basically, it was one person led to another. That's I how see. it was. I think, uh, amazing intro, by the way. Uh, there are lots of stuff to unpack just in between that story. Um, I just want to take it a little bit in, back to the beginning. How does one get into the bat manufacturing business or the cricket equipment business? You said that you were talking to your friend Lakshman and he gave you the idea and then you just, you just got a bat made. So did you, did you have like connections with bat makers in England or in Pakistan? And how did you decide on dimensions, weight, grains, all that stuff? So like when Lakshman asked for that bat, what, what did he ask for exactly? And what did you get made for him? So basically, the, uh, he he just wanted a low middle bat. He's like, mm. "Could you get it?" So I got it, right? So and you got it from Pakistan or correct. England? That, those, the first ones were from Pakistan. I see. And I got those made from Pakistan, and those ones, you know, specification basic one, eight to ten grain, low middle, two ten. That's it, right? Yeah. Standard, generic stuff. So got those made. He liked it. They were good, right? The first ones from Pakistan that are always good, anyways, <laughs> right? So that that's how it was. So you, is this thing in Sialkot or is this? It was. It was in Sialkot. Yeah. So it was out of Sialkot at that time and they were good, right? And then basically that's when it, it got into it. When the first two came, I'm like, oh, the response is good, right? So I should get more. Then yeah. I got like five. And then from five, it became 10, right? And then I kept going. Now and I'm like. you're shipping this from, from Pakistan yeah, to Canada yeah. and you've sort of word of mouthing your way. Correct. Into people's kit bags, basically. Kit, exactly. Yeah. So that's how it was. And it was being shipped out of Pakistan. And then I'm like, you know, now it's time to have, you know, different grades or range. Then, you know, I got in touch with Indian manufacturers and English manufacturers. And I knew all of those bat makers because I used to buy bats for my own self. I wish I was a good batsman or <laughs> I am a good batsman. But anyways, I bought those bats and I knew those bat makers, right? Yeah. Uh, and they knew me as well. So when UZ was conceived... And then I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'll start buying from you. So that's how it, it basically happened. So what is a what is a high quality player grade bat have that maybe like I won't get at a normal sports store? Like what is the difference between store bought bats versus like a player edition bat? Like is it the grains? Is it the wood quality? Is it the time it's taken to actually craft the wood? What is the difference that you've seen as a bat manufacturer in between the top grade bats and maybe the lower grade bats? Uh, to be honest, uh, it, it does have, it's a combination of different things. First of all, it, it is a lot about the perception, right? It's not necessary that the more you pay, the better you get, right? You get a better looking bat, that's for sure. But better looking bat does not guarantee a better performance, right? The player's bat, the, the basic characteristic of their bats is that they're made out of low density wood. Because, and why I say low density is because their bats are light and they're massive. 
the edge, the volume is, you know, uh, uh, high. And the edge size is big, the spine is big, right? And then, you know, there is ICC regulations that you have, to, MCC regulations, sorry, that you have to follow, which came in later. But now you have to basically stay within that. So the players one, they just have, you know, lower, denser, uh, lower uh, density wood, low density wood, sorry. And apart from that, there are some players that if you were to put it in front of a club cricketer, he will reject them. He would definitely reject them. No, I guess he, he wouldn't have the knowledge to know if it's a good bat or not. Is that what you're saying? Like he, he'll be like, it doesn't look good. Okay. It just looked garbage. It looked average because uh, like grain wise, it might not be the best one. It might not have the straightest grains or what, right? But the wood would be low density, low density wood. So don't judge a bat by its cover. Exactly. Exactly. Like I'll share a funny story. So Shaheen, this is this year PSL time. The PSL camp. This guy, he was batting. The, he goes into, this is uh, just before the PSL started their training camp. First ball he went. He hit Daman Khan for a six over coverage. First ball. Very first ball. And then he comes out. Right. Uh, and it was, you know, practice just to give it everyone. This guy comes out. I see his bat. He's like, Uzair bhai, ye bat mein jo bhot pasand hai. Mene ka, thik hai, dikhao. And kata is mein jo lachak hai na, bhot achi hai. And when I saw it, the handle was broken. Okay. <laughs> like, it was broken. Not even cracked. It was broken. Yeah. Right. He's like, Uzair bhai, zabar da hai. And I didn't say it to him. I'm like, ye handle aise hi achi hai. Kata, haan, Uzair bhai, wain chakke maar raho is se. And then he sent those bats for a cleanup and I got the handle replaced. And then when he got the bat, he called me, Uzair bhai, yeh handle ko kya hua hai? Yeah. I said, wo toota wa tha. So he said, wo sahi tha na? So I'm like, you know, uh, th this is how basic they are. Yeah. And then the same bat, he hit, I think, 20 or 22 runs against New Zealand in Karachi when Pakistan posted 350 plus runs uh, in uh, ODI in the ODIs, yeah. And he made 20 or 22 runs in the final over. So what I'm trying to say, if an average club cricketer, for example, if his bad handle breaks, he's like, this bat is done. He would say this bat is done. Even after handle replacement, he will be like, oh, it doesn't ping the same. So what I'm trying to say at that level, for those guys, even a broken bat with a replaced handle and all of that, right? It's still working, right? It's still functional. How much effort and how much time goes into quality control in, in bat manufacturing? To be, to be very honest, to start perhaps a brand or, a, you know, any, any venture, yes, obviously the idea and, you know, to first implement it, it's very difficult, right? And once you start it, uh, then you have done the basic, the, the ground level work, right? So it's good. But to maintain that reputation is the hardest thing, right? Yeah. To maintain that quality is the hardest thing. Now, you might get like 20 bats made and one of them might be good for a player. Right. You would be like, oh, this is a low density one. And what is a natural product? You can't really control it unless you overdry it. Then, you know, the durability is not there. And, you know, the the rebound is not as good and all of that because you're just soaking out the moisture out of the wood. Uh, so so that that's the thing. Right. So the the percentage to get a very, very good like a pro level bat is very, very little. Yeah. Like the real it's very le low. Sorry. Yeah. I have a question about your experience with uh, buying bats for your personal self. You said you use all brands of bats. Did you find any brand to be better than the other? Because there's a lot of old English brands like Grey Nichols, GM, Kookaburra in Australia. Like if you would say top three brands are these ones and this is why they're the top three. Uh, my, honestly, I'm very biased when it comes to this. I'm extremely biased uh, when it comes to this. And for me, the top Two brands would be one would be Screaming Cat and the second would be Newberry. And most of most of the cricketers would not have heard about Screaming Cat. Yeah, the first time I'm hearing about yeah. it. Yeah. Newberry, Newberry I have heard, yeah. yeah Newberry, Newberry heard. yeah. So basically the John L. Newberry, he he was a bat maker and he had uh apprentices under him. And one was Julian Millichamp, one was uh Tim Keeley, and one was Andrew Kember. And I'm sure he did have a few others. So Julian Millichamp had started Millichamp and Hall. I don't know, like if you look at MNH, oh, MNH, yeah, yeah, perfect. So Millichamp is that Julian H is Jonathan Hall. So they partnered up, they made MNH. And then Julian moved to Australia. He started his own brand called Screaming Cat. So his bats were amazing, 
right? And then he stopped making bats because of health conditions. His bats were next level. What about yeah. them were good? The the thing was, obviously, the handles were good. There was a lot of volume, right? For example, a lot of the manufacturers, what they don't do now is, for example, they keep the bat very thin at the top and they put everything in the hitting area, which is a good thing. But what uh, a lot of the time, it offsets the balance and everything, right? And so he did have a bat. He, he, he constructed a bat which had, you know, the greatest volume, or you could say, you know, the volume was very good. Long middle, the spine goes into the handle, might not be thick as edge. It was not thick edges, but the volume was there, right? You don't yeah. really need edges to make runs. You need to use the middle, right? Yeah. And his, he would have spine going all the way, right? So bigger edges bat have a wider middle, longer, uh, basically a higher spine bat or a longer spine bat has a longer middle, right? So that that's the thing. So Newberry and Screaming Cat are top two, hands down. But Tim what about Keeley, Tim Keeley, basically? Yeah. What about the uh, the the kookaburras like he was talking about, or even the more more Pakistani manufactured bat like the HS? And the Malik mids, bats, yeah. the mids bats. CA, what are, CA is huge. Yeah. What are your thoughts on those bats? The, they're they're good with all due respect. Again, you're you're comparing basically someone who is mass producing bat and someone who is just focusing who is niche. Yeah. Right. Uh, who has a niche and who is focusing more on quality. Right. And those guys, the small, the guys like Tim Keeley and uh, Julian Millichamp, they focus more on the uh, on the quality. They're not making like thousand bats a month like how CA is doing or any of these guys are doing, they would make like 100 bats a month, right? And they would be okay with that. But those 100 would be very good. So they do have their reputation. What is their business model like? Because CA needs to make 1,000 bats a month and sell 1,000 bats to stay in business. Yeah. Well, how does Newberry and Screaming Cat, like you were saying, can they, they can survive on 100 bats? Are they like 100 premium bats for premium players? Or is it just because they're, they love the passion of it, that's why it, they're doing it? It's not for the money. I, I, I think it's, it's a mixture of both, right? Uh, they, they would make 100 bats, but they would be like premium bats, right? And like, for example, I think, I don't remember what year was it, but there was this one Ashes touring team and out of 16 members, I think 14, 13, 14, 14 members had Screaming Cat bats, Julian Millichamp bats, basically. He was that renowned. And the thing is, for example, these guys in Australia or England when a player buys their bat, they pay, right? It's not like Pakistan or you walk into CA and you're like, yeah. oh, you know what, <laughs> Fakhar Daman and you get as many free bats. Although he's sponsored <laughs> by them, but those guys, they actually pay. So that, that keeps them afloat and then the word of mouth. So that, that's what it is. And that's why you don't see them spending heavily in sponsorship, right? For example, CA has, needs to sell a thousand bats because they have X number of players who, who are being sponsored and they have to fulfill X amount, like X amount in order to sustain yeah. or to maintain the sponsorship level. So, so that's, that's how it is. Okay. So when you initially signed your first, I would say big player was, like you said, Sikandar Raza. Yeah. What was the deal with him? Were you just sponsoring him bats or I don't want to get in the details, but were you actually paying him as well for uh, using your bats? Yeah. Sikandar Raza, I was paying him. So he, uh, he was the first one who got paid on UZ. And because at that time, UZ only had bats. Like when UZ uh, started, it was only bats. And then the second item was gloves. Right? Yeah, makes then, sense. Yeah. So that's you how want, it was. You want fries with your burgers, right? <laughs> exactly. Right? And so that's what it was. And then later on, these other things got added. But Sikandar Raja, yes, he was being paid. And okay. his contract was just the first T10 series. And in, in hindsight, I think I overpaid him, but his contract was just the first series. And then he, he's like, you know what? I didn't perform very well in the first one. So I'll use, use that in the second series as well, the second tournament. And I think he did score in the second tournament. Does him scoring runs with your bat, did that sort of help tr put traffic on you, said? It, it did. It did. Uh, uh, it honestly did. But like, for example, if you were to say that, you know, the, a lot of people didn't really know you that even at that time, right? Now, for example, like people would talk about Nassim Shah's sixes, right? Those last. We'll get to that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll get to that. No, but, but go ahead. What, what are you yeah, saying? So Nassim Shah's sixes. Yes, he did hit those sixes, but nobody realized that Nassim Shah had hit those sixes after being on UZ for two and a half years. 
right? He fr- he signed for UZ in mid twenty, uh, basically two thousand twenty. Yep. And then he hit those sixes in September twenty twenty two. Yep. Right. So it's two and a half years. It took two and a half years of investment in order to get that visibility from Nasim Shah. Yeah. So basically, that's what it was. Yep. Definitely. And we we wanted to talk about that. Was that the moment that genuinely put UZ on the map? Where, where firstly, like before that happened. Where was where was you said, and then did you see any spike after that incident? Uh, bef- when Nassim had hit those sixes, uh, that was September twenty twenty two. And just for context, this is the sixes that he hit against Afghanistan in the yes. Asia Cup, which helped Pakistan qualify for the finals of the Asia Cup. Correct. Yes. Those sixes, the one that he had hit in Charger, the iconic sixes, yes. <laughs> and it it did you you. You could say yes. Those, those, that was one of the peak moment. Uh, or yes, I, I think it would still be the peak moment to be honest. But then there are other moments as well, which had glorified the brand name or whatever you know, and it, it had uh, increased everything. Shaheen started using UZ in 2022 PSL. I think it was a game against Peshawar Zalmi. Uh, he, he last ball hit, six. Yeah, last ball six. That was UZ. So you know there was a spike. And then, but when Nassim did it, that was the biggest fight, of right? Course. Because then, then what happened is that bat got auctioned. Shai the Freedy Foundation bought it, right? And sorry, Shai the Freedy Foundation first bought it, and then it got auctioned by Shai the Freedy Foundation. So you know, it kept going on. It yeah. wasn't just like overnight thing. Well, it was overnight thing, and then, but it was prolonged as well because you know, Shaheen made a video with Hasnan, right, on PCB channel, and then Shai the Freedy Foundation. They bought the bat and then they auctioned it and etc. Right. So where were you when the sixes happened? Like to be very honest, the sixes. Like I was, I prayed Isha in Makkah, Masjid Al Haram. Mashallah. I I was literally there. I prayed Isha, and I checked the score, uh, and Pakistan won. Yeah. Right. I mean, although I should have had better intention, straight away I posted a picture on Instagram. Use it, FTW. Right. Yeah. And I turned my phone off, right? After I finished the Umrah, right? And we we were basically in Sahih, right? After praying the nuffles and no. everything, you, uh, getting the haircut done. I, I got a hot pot and I, I turned my phone on and it just kept going on, right? The screen was, you know, WhatsApp messages kept flowing in, right? And I, I was thinking, I'm like, if I got hundreds and hundreds of messages, Nassim must have gotten thousands and thousands of messages. Yeah. That's how it was. and. After that Umrah, like five days after Umrah, I met Nassim in Lahore. And we, we went for Dumba, Dumba Karai, uh, beside his house. <laughs> and Nassim is like, I still don't know what's happening. I still can't process it, right? That, that's what he was trying. Think, think about it, right? Right now, at night, you just go play a cricket game, right? Right now, nobody is texting you, nothing. All of a sudden, five hours later, you grab your phone, you're a world superstar now. I think that sensation. Yeah, exactly. Literally, right? Yeah. And you you walk out of Sharjah and now you're a superstar. Yeah. Sharjah Cricket Stadium. And I think that is the moment when Nassim Shah also peaked as well, right? Yes. So that's when he, not perhaps peaked, but that's where his transition had his started. His stardom had, had jumped a few notches. Because he was also sure. bowling very well in the absence of Shaheen. That also yes. helped really yes. push him. It, it, it did, right? So the Shaheen and Nassim, it's like another... Story of Wasim and Wakar. Confirmed, right? so yes, There's a lot of similarities as well, right? So between both of them. What was the backstory of uh, Nasim Shah's bat? Because on the PCB video, Hasnain said that he lent his bat to Nasim. Yeah. So was Hasnain also on the UZ? Yeah, Hasnain is on UZ as well. So, 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 so the, this is what I was saying, right? So you know how Shah, uh, Nasim had hit those sectors, he became a sensation, and UZ is you know famous now and all of that. But there are so many intricacies involved, right? There are so many pieces behind it, so many elements. Nassim had a bat, right? Which he, ha- uh, yeah, he had a bat which he loved. And then that bat broke. So I had given him a new bat before Asia Cup. And a new bat, you know, he wasn't get, uh, used to do it. He didn't really play in and all of that. And Hasnan, I met him in 2022, March, April. He was at NCA. Doing, uh, he was basically remodeling his action after so, he was banned from for checking from sort of. from Big Bash, yes. right? Uh, in 2019, I, uh, sorry, 2021, Big yeah. Bash illegal 20, bowling action, correct? Yeah, 
and then he was remodeling his action and i told husne and i said bhai i have a bat it's slightly heavy but it's a very good bat he like haan ji uzair bhai de de i gave him the bat he started using it he opened up and all of that and then nasim bat was new and then nasim uh, went in the middle he's like hasnan you know i'm not feeling good with this bat give me your bat and hasnan told me the story he's like give me your bat and nasim gave him his bat oh, sorry hasnan gave his bat and rest is you know history so they were basically just exchanging bats under the uzi banner yeah basically like a table man yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> right good thing it was uzi on the other end too yeah yeah right? genuinely And then once that happens do you see an uptick in sales people are checking your website out people are people want to buy this bat or is it just um the sensation you know sometimes viral sensations they you see a spike but then they die down immediately was it a consistent spike not did that put Uzi on a platform where they could be you know people want would want a Uzi bat over a CA bat or a, or a Kukabura bat that that definitely was the case right because at that time again the local people knew Uzi But now we knew you guys because when that six happened you were like yo this is this is there's bad actually one person you didn't mention your initial signing was Fahad Chaudhary he's, <laughs> he's a friend of mine he plays for my team Share CC uh in the Markham League and that's the, the first time that I saw the UZ bat yeah. so shout out to Fahad but yeah but when that's a uh, Shaheen moment uh, the Nasim moment happened apologies he I was just like it's it's on the map now like it's yeah, worldwide it it was right now and, and the thing is when Nasim had hit six right a lot of people not only in canada got to know uz but even in like for pakistan the different these other brands got to know uz as well right before they it wasn't really on the map now everybody became aware of it and then you know yes there was more traffic on the website there were more sales more people are you know interested in in uh in the brand in the uh product so th- there was definitely a spike yeah now it's such an interesting thing so if i wanted to like break down your sort of business model It's really hard to get like the high marquee players like an Azam Khan or or Fakhar Zaman per se to to sign with you because they they want to go where the money's at and you're just a startup you're trying yeah. to make it big eventually you're not going to do it over years but it's going to take some time so you sort of went for the the bowlers you yeah. had Hasnain you had Nasim the uh, Indian guys the Indian guys Akram. people there there's enough spotlight on them that your your the user brand could be on television as much as it could because under 19 players maybe they don't get signed as much but you know their telecasts are still huge i was just watching the asia cup and 20000 people were watching it live yeah. so if an under 19 player is playing with your bat 20000 eyeballs are on that yeah. thing you also have a lot of women players as well signed up yeah yeah so how did that business model come about like did you realize that initially that this is probably the way to go and then you'll have a moment like nasim shah where like it'll just explode and it'll all be worth it like you sort of put your bets really like high on that stake to be honest uh like a lot of the time i feel like people go with uh top bottom approach instead i went the other way yeah, i'm the like bottom you know top, yeah. bottom up approach and i'm like okay you know what i can't get the marquee players they're too expensive like i'm being very realistic do you have a figure of how expensive they, how they are like let's say talk about uh per player number x was yeah. a top marquee player how much would he charge for like let's say a series or a per match like for example uh a top like top order pakistani batsman right like the opening batsman right he would charge around like 2000 canadian per odi inning right okay wow even if it's a zero a golden duck it's still 2000 well he's top order right yeah. right that's not <laughs> that actually because i have a friend whose dad owns a company in canada i won't name the company but uh they offered uh they reached out to kamar lakmo uh, when he was playing the psl and they asked kamar bhai you know how much would you take for a sponsorship and kamar lakmo at the time said for Every PSL match he plays on TV, he'll charge five thousand USD. So does that yeah, seem well, like a good figure to you? Well, that's Kamran Akmo, right? <laughs> he he's a he's a chief selector now, or you know, <laughs> that's Kamran Akmo. He you know the Akmo they have their own rate. They 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 have their own rate. That that's pretty unrealistic, to be honest. Five thousand Canadian for a PSL. The deal did not go through, by the way. <laughs> I know, I know which brand you're talking yeah. about. Uh, I know the deal did not go through. but you know they there are so a lot of the thing, uh, time what happens is right, when you approach these marquee players they're like oh this guy is new in the business let me you know make a, a really make high a good, offer yeah yeah let let me get good money out of him so they they do that he would never say that 
to CA or MB or Med or any of oh, those other Pakistani so mainstream. He was, so he was trying to like highball a low, lower company to... Obviously. Okay, I see. Because the, the lower company, they're like, oh, the thing is the attention that Kamran Akmal is getting from a smaller company oh, I is see. much higher compared to him going to CA. Because CA and, would have like four, four or five marquee players yeah. on the roster at that moment. Correct. Yeah, yeah, they would. They would have those national team players, right? Yes. They wouldn't have someone who is an ex-cricketer Got like it. Kamran Akmal. So, so that's the thing, right? So coming back to what you said, I'm like, okay, you know what? I can't get those marquee players. So why not, you know, start at the uh, lower level, the bottom, all right? And build a foundation, a strong foundation. That's one thing. And the second thing in Pakistan, especially... The instant success always goes to someone who, who can hit sixes or who could bowl fast. That's it. That's right? true. Think about it. Yep. There's all of these fast bowlers who are 140 plus, they have the short burst or whatever you want to say, where they get instant fame. They're, they're very popular right away, right? They go up the ranking, they're number one ODI bowlers and all of that, right? So, so they have all of those phases, right? And the other thing, which I realize and which I feel like, you know, it's, it's the most refreshing thing in this is the relationship that you build. The, there is, you know, a relationship that you build with the player, with the individual, and then you get to know their families and all of that, right? So before I just knew, for example, Shaheen. Now I know his family, like his brother, like his, his father, his father-in-law and all, <laughs> so on, right? Who's that? Yeah, who's that? Some, Some guy. Yeah, Some guy. Some, so, so that's the thing, right? So that's the most refreshing thing. Yes. And I, I guess it's paid dividends because when you invest in players like that and then they become big players, then it's, it's, your, it's your investment that goes through. And the thing is, the, uh, there are players who appreciate that as well. They appreciate the fact that you were with them when they were nothing and you treated them very well at that time and you still treat them well at this time. So they genuinely do appreciate that. Like Nassim Shah, for instance, you said you signed him after the Australia tour, which is his debut tour. He suffered injuries. He came back into the team. He's injured again now. Uh, and same thing with Hasnayan. He, he had the whole action issue. Now he has an, uh, an ankle injury. Uh, is he still under the UZ? Yeah. I, I, one thing about UZ is that they don't cut off the sponsorship when someone is injured or sidelined. Right? Like obviously, a cricketer, any cricketer, when he's actively playing, he's getting the most attention ever, right? And he's always, you know, in the media, in front of the camera and everything, right? And as soon as they're injured, they're sidelined. Their phone doesn't ring. Nobody's messaging them and all of that. And this is what I told myself. I said, you know, at their down point, I have to be there. Like, I have to be there. And I feel like that's where the relationship with the player got stronger, right? That they're like, you know, they acknowledge and respect the fact that Oh, yes, UZ or Uzair was there with us even when we were nothing, right? Or even when we, we got sidelined and nobody would ask us, this guy would still be like, hey, you need gloves or whatever. He would still look after us because everybody, it's, it's general, like I think it's a human nature. We all crave attention, right? So they, they, they want that as well. Also, Pakistani cricketers remind me a lot of like rappers. Like when the rappers are down in the dusk, like nobody's asking for them. And then as soon as the rapper makes it, they always remember their day ones, the OGs. Like this guy was with me when I was in the slums in the in the ghetto, and now I'm I've made it big. I'm gonna I'm gonna lift them with myself. Well, I, I think it's a it's a Pakistani community thing as well, right? Yeah. So they they do that, and I I think it's a very good thing personally. I think it's a very very good thing that you look after those who who were with you when you had nothing, right? And all there's so many stories. Like once you get to know these players closely, they have like a couple of those sort of guys who were with them when they were nothing. And then they looked after them, right? When they financially got, you know, uh, richer, right? They looked after those guys as well, yeah. right? Uh, if they were not uh, rich. Yes. So, they, so there are so many of those examples in Pakistani cricketers. And I think it's a great thing. It's, it's a great thing. You have, those unit, you have that unity, you have that bonding. And honestly, the more united you are, the more successful you would be. So how do you like... Again, the whole quality control question, you're in Canada and you're based out of Canada. And let's say if uh, Shaheen Afidi needs a bat in Lahore, how do you make sure the bat that he's getting is top quality 10 out of 10 grade bat? 
do you, you do you personally see it through? Like, does it have to go through your hands to, for to go to Shaheen's? Then how does the logistic work? Then if it's built in, let's say, let's say if it's built in Sialkot, does it get shipped to you? Then you ship it back to Lahore. Like, how does that functionality so, work? So now it's not built in Sialkot. So now you use that does have their own setup uh, uh, and all of that. And uh, again, depending on the player, like now the thing is that I've kind of understood this. Initially, I was learning it as well. Now I understood, you know, what time frame uh, are like and all of that. And I, I do visit the factory very often now. And factory is located where? It's in Lahore, okay. right? So there is a small setup for you that in Lahore, I do go there like every three months. I would be there and I would get those bat made. And when I am there, I would get bat made and I'm like, okay, this is good for Shaheen. Let me keep it aside. So I'll what are you it. looking at? At the bat for Shaheen, for example, like what does he want that you're looking for? Like for example, Shaheen, the way he is, okay, he's he's coming at the end, he's gonna come and hit at it, you know. So you when when someone is hitting the ball, you want a typically a low middle bat because they're trying to play in front of their eyes and they're trying to reach for the ball, right? So sometimes they play early as well, and the more early you play, the the lower it hit on the on the bat, right? So for Shaheen, you need a lower middle bat. Right, that's what he prefers. Lower middle bat, something which is full, right? No, not much concaving, and that way, you know, when he's able to make the contact point with the ball, it's at the lower part, right? The sweet spot has to be low. Yeah. So that's with Shaheen, right? And what's so now, the weight of his bat? His bat weight would be two nine. And the the standard average size for just for context would be two seven two eight. Uh, yeah. Like the thing is, his bats are long blade too. Right? right, so they're they're slightly longer as well. So two nine, when I say two point nine, two pounds nine ounces, it's fully dressed with the grip, with the stickers and everything on it. Right, if it's without grip and all of that, it would be two seven ish, right? Two pounds seven ounces. Yeah. Okay. Pretty pretty cool. And then so that once you've locked in that bat when you, when you're at the factory, you're like, okay, this is good for Shah- Shaheen Afridi. This is good for Shahid. This is good for Nasim. You then have these those bats shipped out to them. Yeah, like, uh, it, I, I, honestly, I would ask Shaheen, I would be like, oh, hey, Shaheen, how many bats do you have in your kid bag? If he says, oh, I have four kid, uh, four bags in my, uh, four bats in my kid bag, then I'll be like, okay, you know what? I have a fifth one for you. Whenever you need it, let me know. Is that okay? the average four bats is what most the players take with them when they're traveling? No, it, it's a preference, honestly. Uh, a lot of the time, the thing is when the Pakistani players are bowling, uh, or sorry, when Pakistani players are touring, with Pakistan national team, they barely get to bat in net. Yeah. They barely get to bat in net because the the coach and all of these guys would be like, you know, you have to bowl. Like you have to bowl 15, 20 hours. You have to bowl 15, 20 hours. And you have no no choice. Like yeah. I remember that one of the players had uh, shared a story uh, in their first uh, tour, to, which was to Australia. He's like, they were making us bowl 15 to 25 overs every single day in yeah. net. And when we would say that, hey, you know what, I'm tired, they would be like, oh, you are getting paid. This is your job. So you have to do it. Let me guess, Bakar yeah. Yunus was the bowling coach. <laughs> yeah. No comments. No, no comments, comments there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's how it was, right? So they, they are, and the thing is, the, the, the younger the player is, or, you know, when he's junior or whatever, they do get bullied. They yeah. do get bullied. I guess the concept is like Ragnar you know, yes. like rigorous it's training. It's the hazing. It's the hazing concept, right? Yeah, that that that's still the context. Yeah. Right. So whether it's Wakar Yunus, whether it's Mohammed Afid, they still do it, hmm. and they all share the same ideology. When they would come on TV, and when they're not in the position, they will be like, "Oh, it should be like this. It should be like that." But they all do it, and this is why I actually, you know what, respect Haris Rove's decision too. Yeah. Well, I'm talking now. I'm being a bit selfish in this. Right. Yes. Now I know him personally. Right. My connection with him is on personal level. I wouldn't want him to be injured. That that's my you know opinion or perception. Sorry. Yes. Uh, because I know him personally. Yes. Okay. He should be playing for Pakistan Test and all of that. But this guy, he knows his body doesn't have that. Right. Mm. So why you know push himself, risk yourself, injure yourself? You know. Uh, then you have big bash. His big bash contract is. Very, very good, right? Yeah. He, he's being paid a big uh, uh, sum. So why would he risk that? And then you have PSL and all of that. Everybody, everybody has a right to earn. And I think Haris Rove going into this test squad would have been more of a liability. Uh, yeah. We just saw how hard it was to bowl in a specific area for Pakistani bowlers as they were in right now. And Haris 
if he doesn't have that background, if he needs more time to actually hone that craft, him going in Australia and getting whipped by like Warner would really devolve his confidence. It would. And yeah. it would also injure him too. Yes. Right? Like Hornup Chazad just put, uh, pulled up a niggle. He did injured, yeah. It just, yeah. One test match, he's already one injured. One test match. So there you go. So and then Harris would test. have been, yeah. And also worse. like you haven't really prepared Harris though for this state. Like he hasn't played any first class in the past one year. Uh, played one test match, balled 13 overs, got injured in the first inning. So like you haven't groomed him as a red ball player and suddenly that's just throwing him into the fire. And uh, Bahar Riaz mentioned that, you know, Harris Rofe not touring to Australia will be a huge critical. Blow. It'll be a huge blow for Pakistan. <laughs> yeah. So well, just already making excuses for the losses. Yeah. Th- now, the thing is, now we, we often talk about the players not playing first class or what, right? Now, okay, I'm not talking about this current year. Before, you just had 10 games in the season, right? 10 games in a season. And the season was happening from October to January, Yeah. right? And if you think, if you look at it, the last two years, in those, though, basically, even from yeah, even from this year, if you look at it, we had World, World Cup last year in October. You had World Cup, and uh, yeah, and then before that, you had uh, Asia Cup and all of those. Yeah, right? that was in the. So there's so much cricket that they're already playing. So when do they get a chance to do that? So because they're obviously being streamlined into the uh, national setup much quicker, right? So they're being fast tracked into that right so i'm guessing uh like before you got into the whole bat manufacturing uh, industry you were like a fan like us yeah so you were looking at cricket from like the outside yeah but now you're sort of part of the community you know the players on a very personal basis what have you learned now as part of knowing them that you didn't know as a fan looking outside you know our our expectations or our demands are very unrealistic when we are fans Right. We have to respect that at the end of the day, they're a human too. Right. They just can't be bowling at 145 every single game. Right. They will have a patch where they are not performing as good. They will have a downtime and all of that. So you kind of have to respect that. Well, a lot of the time we are thinking that, oh, yes, Jaheen is not bowling quick anymore and all of that. Yes, he's not. He's not bowling at his, you know, usual pace. But, you know, the, you have to also realize the fact that this guy, like, you know, he Shaheen loved big moments. He loved big moments. He knew that he was not fully fit for the T20 World Cup, but he wanted to show up on a big stage. And mind you, he didn't bowl bad throughout the tournament, basically. It was just in the final when he was, you know, going for the catch. He injured himself and all of that. But throughout the tournament, he did bowl well. Like, if you look at his numbers, they were not bad, right? Yeah. Statistically, he keeps himself afloat. Yes. Right? Generally, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he does. So... And he, 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 you know, he wants those big moments and all of that. And then the thing is, once you have the knee injury for a fast bowler, it, it, it's very, you know, psychologically, it, it takes a lot for you to get back to it. So I feel like, you know, as an outsider, we are very unrealistic. Our, we are very unrealistic. We, are, we have a lot of demand from them and all of that. And when you know players on personal level, first thing, they don't talk about cricket. Yeah. They barely talk about cricket. Right, they they're not interested in cricket. They would talk about anything and everything with you, but not cricket. And we we want to talk about cricket, but then you realize that you know they they don't care about that. It's like when you're you're doing your day job and you've finished your nine to five and you've gotten yeah. home, you don't want to talk. You don't about talk about what that. No? <laughs> no, you don't and talk we, about that. With your for friends. us, we don't realize that for them, this is a job. Sometimes it's, it's their a profession. Grind. It's their career, right? 100%. It's not not necessarily their passion. Yeah. Like sometimes we're doing jobs, right? Or the the contract that we have, or the company that we are working with, we might not really like it, but we are just doing for sake of it. Yes. For sake of employment or whatever, right? Similarly, these guys are playing cricket for sake of employment, basically. Yeah. They, so, they have a family to feed it at the end of the day. 100%. And we forget that. That was also one of the shockers that, uh, for us, I feel like we had as well. It was that when we were hanging out with, let's say, Azam or Haris, we were like, oh, they really don't want to talk about cricket. We, they would rather talk about anything else. Yeah. Like, Haris and, uh, we talked about Haris about, like, flights and international travel more than we talked about like oh how was your innings yeah. in south africa like adam would send reels on instagram yeah that would be <laughs> anything and everything except cricket yeah yeah Azam is genuinely one of those people like a very well-rounded person as well and like has so many interests that he wants to talk about before cricket yeah and he's one of those guys that genuinely and, he, and the thing about Azam is that he he has information of everything yeah right he he's very informative he has information of everything so I, I I was in dressing room with him for when he was here for GT20, 
And this guy would talk about anything and everything about cricket. Yeah. Like, even when he gets out, he's sitting down there talking about other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess mean, it's good because he doesn't take cricket too seriously. No. Like, he just, he, he likes play cricket. He's he's laid back. He's chill. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's just genuinely he good at it. He focuses when he wants yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. And he's, because he's so genuinely good at it, like, he... He can just be. He can focus on other things while still being really good at cricket. Yeah, it's almost envious at some point. Exactly, and and the thing is, I for example, we mentioned Azam Khan, and one story just came to my mind. So I think it was the first game of GT Twenty. He made sixty odd. Yeah. So before going out to bat, he shows me a bat. He's like, "Uzair, bhai, ye bat kaise?" And I look at it. And I'm like, "Dabardast." And that bat, for example, if I put it in front of a club cricketer, it had helmet. So basically when you have helmet in your kit bag, so a lot of the time there is Nick and helmet. So he had, that bat had Nick's on the front, not on the back, but front, right? So it literally had like indentation, yeah. right? And if you put that in front of a club cricketer, you'll be like, oh no, man, I don't want to use it. It looks ugly, mm. right? Adam goes out to bat, scores a 60 yard and comes back. He's like, Zabardas bat. Love the bat. His bat's <laughs> pretty heavy as well. I think he mentioned uh, he, he uses a very heavy bat, like two, 12 to 13. Yeah, he, he, he's pretty muscular too, right? Yeah. So his bat and he said, uh, I was like, why do you use such a heavy bat? He's like, it's great for hit six hitting. Yeah. That's what yeah. I need the it for. The thing is that, for example, when he, he has a good bat speed anyways, yeah. right? So he has a good bat speed. So like, I mean, with a heavier bat, even if he kind of mistimes it, and then the fact that he muscles it, it will still clear. Yeah. Right? It will still clear. Our first time sort of seeing or, or holding any player bat was uh, the CA Dragon that you have here. This is Fakhar Zaman's bat. And we met at the hotel uh, and I immediately saw because I'm sort of a, I'm a bat geek. So I know which player uses which bat. And immediately when I saw it, I was like, yo, that is Fakhar Zaman's bat. And we held it and it felt so light, uh, even though I think you mentioned it was sort of on the heavier side. But just the balance, the pickup, uh, the way it felt in the hands it was it was really great. How did you get your hands on this uh, and tell us the, more about Spat? The thing about UZ is, yes, there are some players who are sponsored by UZ, but then there are these other players within the team who I know on a personal level as well, right? And I do have a relationship, right? Now, now when I have a relationship, that doesn't necessarily mean I will tell them that, hey, Fakhar bhai, use UZ, right? Like, I respect, we have a friendship. We were chatting this morning even. We have a friendship. We have a relationship. Why would I, you know, make things awkward for him or difficult for him? Or why would I, you know, give him the notion or perception of the fact, ha, ye bhi mat hai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Why would I do that? Right. I That's something that I don't feel comfortable with. So, but I know these guys personally very well as well. Right. So, Fakhar Zaman, I mean, he knows I love bad. He 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 came to my house a few times, and I I do invite you guys to come to my house. And I have <laughs> like you. two coffins full of cricket bats, which are just from cricket players. You also the, mentioned you have some players. memorabilia, so I would I love do. to see that as well. I do, yeah, I do. We're cricket geeks, and we would love to see that stuff. No, definitely. I I I'm talking about. I have two coffins full of cricket bats, which are from international players. So how like like you said, you started collecting these at a very young age, and you're just yeah. like the, it, the obsession got over. Yeah, it, it was. It, it's still obsession, to be honest. Yeah. I'm still obsessed with cricket bats and, and all of that. And now, for example, you spoke about Fakhar Zaman CA Dragon, right? The, yes, the bat is amazing, no doubt. It's amazing bat. But you also have to realize that the batsman is amazing too. Yeah, 100%. He yeah. knows how to use a bat better, right? He knows, you know, there there is an adage. It says a poor uh, craftsman always blames his tools. Yeah. Something like that. I'm I'm paraphrasing it. So these guys, they know how to use a cricket bat very well. So there is one Canadian cricket player who was sponsored by UZ. And during GT20, he comes to me and we were in the hotel lobby. And he's like, oh, these international player bats are something else. As soon as he said that to me, I'm like, well, these international players know how to use a bat better. Right? 100%. Uh, right? Yeah. I'm like, I give them the same bat. Right? But they know how to use a bat better. Right. Uh, you were talking about Azam. This guy goes to his uh, dad's academy and all he does is hit uh, uh, power hit. Right. Oh, sorry. All he's doing is power hitting. Yeah, long range he's, hitting. Yeah, yeah, long range hitting. He, he was living in the apartments in front of the, the academy and he literally saw Azam in June, the heat wave of Karachi, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Azam yeah. is just batting for hours and hours. And yeah, it was because uh, my in-laws live right across. And yeah. at the Creek Vistas. Yeah, and Creek Vistas. literally the, the, the gallery opens into the into the ground. Are they Shweb Malik neighbor? No. 
Shri Malik lives there too. I haven't seen him there. But uh, I saw Shreya Malik at, uh, at, at He was shooting time. the Masterclass series Yeah, the, yeah. the, the A plus Mar- Masterclass series But I saw So one, one morning I was just like I woke up I was Because I was working From, from Pakistan Here in Canada yeah. And I was, at, I was at work And I just look out the window And I see on There's like three pitches There's a cement pitch And there's this, this You can see Azam's stature It's yeah. very noticeable I'm yeah. like I think that's Azam Khan So I take my phone out I zoom in I'm like 100% That's Azam Khan is. And I think it was about 2.15 p.m. in like a 37 degree heat, heat? in the yeah. afternoon. And I go back to work. I'm like, wow, that's cool. Send him a picture. Pretty yeah. cool. Two hours later, he's still there. Yeah. There you and go. this is practicing long heading. And you, we were a good like 120, 130 meters away. I could hear the ping of his bat. Yeah. Because yeah. that's how much he practices. That's yeah. how much he knows his middle. Yeah. So imagine, for example, when you have that much volume behind you, if he's doing that one day, yeah. imagine him repeating that every single day. Yeah. There is so much volume behind it that's a success rate is automatically high, right? So, so th- that's the thing, right? So when this Canadian player told me, oh, their bats are impressive, I'm like, no, it's also about the batsman. How many balls are you hitting to, you know, clear the rope or whatever? Fair enough, yeah. Right? So you have to be mindful of that. Now, coming back to fuckers bat, like, I'll be very honest with you, right? If I put two bats in front of you, they're exactly the same. And if I say... Uh, the both are the standard retail bats, you'll be like, yeah, they're good. And the moment I say one of them is Fakhar Daman's bat, you're auto- automatically your perception will change. 100%. Because it's an international player's bat. And then Fakhar Zaman also has a gravitas to his name. Yeah. Right? We know him from the Cham- Champions Trophy final. Yeah. We know him from just the World Cup match against New Zealand. The gravitas comes with the bat. It's almost like that. I don't know if you've seen that Indian movie, Chain Kuli Ki Main Kuli. Have you seen that movie? I've not. I'm it's really actually, bad with movies. I can't believe I'm bringing this up. <laughs> but it's an Indian movie. Basically, the premise is uh, this kid gets uh, Kapil Dev's bat and starts batting like Kapil Dev. Right? It's a, it's a fa- high fantasy movie, right? Yeah. And so it's one of those things where I'm like, if I could fucker Zaman's bat, maybe I'll start hitting sixes like fucker Zaman. I swear to God, if I could, <laughs> like, for example, if bat made runs, I would have more runs than Sachin Tendulkar. <laughs> Hands down. Given the amount of bats I have at home, I would have more runs than Sachin. I had a question. I mean, so, so Virat Kohli uses an MRF bat, but obviously MRF is a target company. They don't yeah. actually make bats. So do you know what bat maker's bat he uses? Or, or could, well, could you sort of sponsor fucker in the same way where you're like, fucker by... Here's a bat. Here's our wood. Put the CA sticker on Whatever it. sticker you want. Does that happen ever? It does. It has happened with the same person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, same person. Like, Fakhar uh, Zaman, this is uh, 2020, uh, actually this year PSL, right? During PSL, he's like, Uzair bhai, I have a bat in the handle. So I got those bats made. I found one. It had amazing flex in the handle. So what? how do you get flex in the handle? So I'm cutting you off. So, this is very no, no, no. So basically what it is, is that a lot of the time, okay, you know, it's the cane, which is being used in mm-hmm. the handle. Mm-hmm. So sometimes the cane is a little flexible, but also it's about like, for example, the insert that you put in the handle, right? If you, put, for example, put a rubber insert, sometimes, you know, it gives a flex and all of that. So it's, it's, some it's, bats have three inserts, some have five. I've yeah. seen that as well. Yeah. Some have three, that, that's a 12 piece handle. Some, uh, some have five inserts, which is like, five, six piece, uh, six piece handle or eight piece handle. So it's stuff like that. So, and literally when you say 12 piece, there are 12 pieces in the handle, right? I see. So, so that's how it is. So Fakhar likes that. So I'm like, Fakhar, bhai, ye bat mujhe acha laga hai. Aap, aap pakna, kaisa laga hai? Udair bhai, acha hai. And he, he taps with his finger like this. Acha hai Udair bhai. Yeah. Maka, there you go. So when you're giving a bat to, let's say, uh, Shaheen or Fridi or Fakhar Zaman, are you giving him a fully knocked bat? Yeah, what does that term mean, fully knocked? Fully knocked, I mean, you just have to play it in, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not fully knocked. There is no bat which is generally fully knocked. But if you go to Pakistan, new. like I just bought a bat from Pakistan. And so I, I played a few matches in because I was there for a very long time. And so I played some like really like league matches there with some friends, hardball and all that. I bought a bat, a really expensive bat, like 25,000 rupees bat. And the guy tells me, oh, just play, start this tomorrow morning. Yeah. Like it's fully knocked. I'm like, Really? Like, and it had a sticker that yeah, fully, fully knocked, knocked and everything. But I'm like, I played the first game with it and I felt it was not knocked at all. Yeah. Like I, and then I went home, I got a mallet from, from yeah. the same store, started knocking it like day and night, like, yeah. a, like a maniac. But after a few couple of days, the third game that I played, felt it was a lot better. Yeah. So fully knock is obviously just a marketing ploy, right? For example, if they don't put a fully knocked uh, sticker on it, and for example, if you buy a bat, 
And like, for example, you had you broken it the first day, you would still go and buy a bat. Yeah. So they get more business, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Right. It's a bit of a scammy. It's, it's felt very it's shifty about, to me. It's all about making more money right, yeah. for them. Right. Uh, it's all about that. At the end of the day, that's what you're doing. Right. So it's not fully not. Even the players, right? Whether they get from Tim Keeley or whoever, they spend time with the bat in the net, like Fakhar Zaman or anyone for the sake of matter. Uh, they would spend time in the net and they will play the bat in. They will knock the bat in. They will be, you know, get used to do it and all of that. It's a natural process. This is why we see Baba whenever he's like the PCB Nets videos, he's like four bats. Like he's playing with one every couple of, couple of like vi- videos in the in the in the series you'll see like he'll like change a bat up he'll start playing yeah. with another one like for example i don't know if you focus on players bats their game bats and like if you zoom in and all of that speaking about Babar Azam, the the video that he posted before australian test series where he was wearing the orange shirt and he was having uh, a hit in uh indoor academy at uh nca yep those were brand new bats yeah they were yeah. brand new bats right and, and look you can at tell his, from the sound uh by the sound yeah by the sound, by the look, and all of that. And when you look at his match pictures, for example, you'll notice the bat is used. Yeah. The scuff sheet is dirty. The grain. Like, for example, look at Mitch Marsh bat, Mitchell Marsh bat that he was using. Deep cut, but I don't know. Have you noticed Harry Brooks bat? He's, it seems like he's using a very old bat. It's uh, yeah. the same grip color I've noticed in every single format, every single match. And it seems like it's been used from like Don Bradman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they do. Like, obviously, once you have a good bat, why would you want to get rid of it? I have a, why don't you have different bats for different formats? It depends. Like for example, when they're going to Australia, they do prefer slightly lighter bats or slightly higher middle bat because you're trying to, you know, the ball's coming to you, right? And it's bouncing more. So you would want something which is slightly higher sweet spot as opposed to when you're playing, let's say, in Pakistan where the bounce is not as high, yeah. right? And the pitches are slow and they're low, so low sweet spot bat. So th- there are cases like that. And uh, I have a I have a business opportunity for you. There's a Pakistani cricketer right now who uh, is playing test match in in Australia. His bat has no sticker on it. How I, did that I tried have... reaching out to him. So Shaquille yeah, needs I a UZ sticker. <laughs> I tried reaching out to this guy. This guy is I I don't know what's up with him. Before so a lot of the time, see the the reason why they also have a plain bat is because they're trying to increase their demand. Okay, I'll give you an example. During this World Cup in India. Pakistan, New Zealand, warm-up game. South Shaquille made, I think, 60-odd or 80-odd. Beautiful inning. Plain bat. World Cup started. He has uh, he SF. had SF sticker. Yeah. Right? Obviously, he increased his demand. Right? Yeah. World Cup finished. SF sticker is gone. Right? Salman Aga is playing as well. Right? SF and SF stickers, respectively, are gone. Before the test series, I messaged Sean. I'm like, Sean, hey, would you ask South Shaquille if he wants a sponsor? He's like, no, he's in talk with someone. I messaged Sefi Bhai. Right, Sefi Bhai, would you ask him? Sefi Bhai is like, no, I don't think it's going to happen. It's a really good surprise, by the way. So, I said, okay. And then he comes out to bat and he's using a plain bat. Plain bat. Then I, I kind of understood. I'm like, you know, I'm going to bow to him. Yeah, okay. So I mean, it's good for him. If he gets a big payday, that's good for him as well. Well, you got to perform first of all yeah. to get well, a payday, right? Good performing in Australia. I guess that's a huge chunk of their their income like the, the sponsors right we always kept like we're skeptical and we think about what must Barber Azam's Grey Nichols bad deal look like like from what I had heard the initial one was six figures in uh, GBP uh, makes sense in, in pound yeah. it was six figures and is that a multi-year deal or is that just for that one year I, I, is that like, annual six figures yeah okay it was, yeah, it was multi-year <laughs> not for months yeah it, it's British pound by the way yeah. not Pakistani rupee uh, yes multi-year deal Definitely, yeah. yeah. That that's because I mean, Great Nichols is reputable. They they try to get the biggest players that they can. Yeah, half the Pakistan team also almost seems like they're Great Nichols. There was sponsor. a time in the last T20 World Cup where Pakistan's top three were all using Great Nichols. So yeah, uh, Babar, Rizwan, Sean. Yeah, yeah Babar, Rizwan, Sean, and then uh, yeah, and prior to that, before Rizwan came on, Shaheen and Shadab Hello. were on Great Nichols as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So Shaheen's contract with Great Nichols ended. That's when he called me, right? This is 2020 when Pakistan toured New Zealand. Yep. Shaheen, the, this is Pakistan toured New Zealand over the winter. And Shaheen's like, Uzair bhai, aap, uh, sponsorship kar rahe hai. 
मैंने कहा किस को करना है कहता है मुझे करना है दिस इज़ हाउ शाहीन स्टोरी स्टार्टेड बेसिकली मैंने कहा जी ठीक है आप मुझे पिक्चर्स भेजें और कितने पैसे देंगे आप बताएं आई आई सेंट हिम ऑल द डिटेल देन द गाई गोज एम आई एज डिसअपियर राइट एंड देन ही वॉज यूजिंग सी ए फ्रॉम न्यू ईयर्स फ्राम ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन एंड देन दैट टाइम गोज and then he contacts me in 2022 february he is like uzair bhai aap sponsor karenge and again i asked him kisko kehta mujhe main kahta nahi aap karte nahi ho i literally said that to him kehta nahi nahi aap pakka yeah so that's how it started with shaheen so that that's you know that was the and then pso he he started using uz And that was and a great PSL for him, by the way. It's a back-to-back win. That's the first one that they won, right? Lower. The first one that he won as 22, a champion. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. then it was a great one. And then in the second one, obviously the he's a captain. One, yeah. He became a batman. He scored a fifty. He he. I think in one of the games he stopped one player. I forgot his name. David Wiese. Correct. He stopped him. He's like, oh, let me go in. And yeah. then he did bat well, right? So so every time, yes, there is use that on the TV. Going back to what you said, there is a spike. For example, the most recent one, Haris Rao. He played uh, now. Haris Rauf is getting a lot of attention in Big Bash, right? They have this House of Rauf, yeah, the stand, yeah. and all of that after him. So this guy goes to bat like his team did garbage. Uh, <laughs> this guy goes to bat. He bats, I think, twelve to fifteen balls or whatever. I wake up and I I I see the uh, Shopify app and I I see the traffic. And at five a.m., right, it had five hundred plus viewers just in that one hour. Oh, what the heck, right? And then I see where are they from? Then it was all Australia. Major like ninety percent was Australia. And then I went to Crick Info, and then I realized I'm like, oh, this guy was batting. Yeah. So yes, every time it does come on TV, there is a spike. And yeah. you have worldwide shipping, so uh, yes, anybody can get it anywhere. Yes. They Now can. we will we will put the descriptions for the bats if anybody from the podcast wants to reach out. Links are going to be in the description. They can You're check it out. Um, one thing I'm learning as as we're going on with this conversation is that it's very important to have interpersonal skills. In, yeah. In essence, a lot of your business partnerships were just friendships before. Yeah. How did you forge those friendships? Like, who was the first catalyst that sort of got you in? Because it's really hard to just to be friends with Shaheen beforehand or be friends with Fakhar. How did you become friends with them in the first place? Have become Personal enough for them to reach out to you and be like, "Hey, I want to buy a sponsor." So basically, in the very first, uh, in the beginning, so I mentioned uh, there was this fitness trainer with the national team, Sabur yeah. Ahmed. So he was the you know my contact point. So every, I used to go to Pakistan uh, every summer. So whenever I would go to Pakistan, you know I would go NCA and all of that. So I'd be you know seeing the players. This is way before you that was conceived. Yeah, and. Then you know I had relationship. Yeah, when they're you know junior, they they tend to remember you. Yeah, <laughs> right. Before they become a superstar, then that's what they're like. Oh, ye kis ka number hai? <laughs> right. Initially, they remember you, and so I kind of knew Nasim. Right. I knew yeah. Nasim. I know his brothers, Hanan, Obed. They're right? doing great, by the way. Yeah. All all Islamabad United boys. That's yeah, you. all Islamabad Here's... United boys. So these guys. So and then I I knew Nasim. Right. So it's basically one person led to another, yeah. right? So with Nasim and Shaheen were uh, like hanging out together. They're roommates, yeah. Yeah, in 2020 uh, summer, and then I got to know Shaheen, right? Yeah. And then you know from Shaheen, you know whenever I met Shaheen, they're like, "Ah, you there, bhai? Yeah, you there, bhai? Yeah." And then oh, acha ha pe hai to istra, you know, it just you know just goes on. So a lot of the time, if I I feel like okay you know what if you're not able to get a certain player on UZ or under the umbrella of UZ that doesn't mean you don't build a relationship with them right yeah 100%. at the end of the day your network is your net worth right you you have to network you have to put in your faith and the the biggest disadvantage that I have is the fact that okay I'm based in Canada and they're based in Pakistan and then I'm sometime initially I was not able to put my faith to the uh, uh, to the brand. Like the first time I met Hasnain, this was in NCA. He's walking this way. I'm walking this way. I stop him. I said, "Salam alaikum, bhai. How are you? I'm fine. I said, 'My house is fine. Everything is fine. I said, 'My family is fine. Everything is fine. I said, 'My action is working. It's right.' And he replied, 'Yes, it's right.' No, he's awkward at this point. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then he he goes, 'Who are you?' 
Like he said it, yeah. right? And we were talking over WhatsApp for like last one year. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Aap koi ne? Main kya yar main Uzair Uzair se. Acha acha Uzair, bhai aap hai. Sorry, 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 yeah. sorry. And then he hugged me and all that. So that's when it hit me. I'm like, you know, it's very important to put a face to uh, to the name or to the brand and all of that. Video call them. <laughs> I, I'm awkward. Uh, I, I'm not very good with that, but I, I find it awkward. But definitely, yes, that that is uh, one of the ways. But uh, I, I feel like you know, when you're in person, you you make better connection. Right? And then and then, so how did you then get Shahid Afridi, who is sort of a legacy artist at this point, a legacy player? He's not a current player, but he's still he still plays the GT Twenty. He still plays like all of this other major leagues that you can play. He's still, he's still there. Legends League, Legends League, yeah. all that stuff. How did you, because his bats, like I was a huge Shahid Afridi fan. And if Shahid Afridi was on MB, I remember MB Share was his bat. Yeah, Share, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. MB Lala. And then I, I was like, I want MB Lala. And then he was on Boom Boom. I want yeah. Boom Boom. And then he, he jumps here and there. But his name is really highly associated with Pakistan cricket. Yeah. And the roots of Pakistan cricket. Getting him on board. How was that like? And how did you do it? Uh, the, first of all, the surname of Afridi is a superstar surname by 100%. now, right? So, yeah, yeah. So, so you know that 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 does add a lot of value or weight. So, how did I basically get? Again, I said, you know, first it's about once you build a relationship, you have to make sure that you know. I personally feel like that. Okay, if I'm sponsoring someone, I just don't want to sponsor them for one year. I want to sponsor them forever. Yes. Right. So, when you sponsor someone forever, you have to maintain that relationship consistently and throughout. So one day, Shaheen messaged me. He's like, Uzair, bhai, hum na lala ka saman bhi use it kai karte hain. So, I said, okay, okay. Right? Shaheen, out of now, blue. Were message. you like super excited when that happened? Or were like, you like, To calm? be honest, <laughs> deep inside, I was constantly contemplating. I'm like, you know, should I tell Shaheen to ask lala? And I mean, if it was someone else, then I would have asked Shaheen. But when it comes to lala, you know, it's uh, pre- pretty intimidating as well. Yeah. And, uh, I, I I was always wanting that, but that never, you know, I never said it. I never said it. And then Shaheen himself said, I'm like, subhanAllah. Yeah. I'm like, the way this works. Right? that's exactly what I wanted. And then, yes. And then I, I, I kept, you know, he came on board. And then, you know, when he came over here, I, you know, during GT20, I met him, he came over. And then again, you know, the relationship became more personal. Yeah. Then he, uh, then he's like, oh, you got to come for my daughter's wedding. In September, right? And then, you know, I was there and all of that. So it became more so, personal, the connection as well. How was that like? Shaheen Afridi's wedding was a royal wedding for Pakistanis. Like, that's yeah. the closest we're going to get to royal weddings yeah. that, that for us. And, like, the biggest of the biggest people were there. Like, the, the entire Pakistan cricket team was there. The entire, I feel like the 90s Pakistan team was there as well. Like, everybody was there. And then you were there as well. Yeah. Not, not to, like, yeah. <laughs> throw shade or anything. How did that feel like as a, as a fan, as someone who loves box on cricket? You're just like, can you believe that you're in the middle of that? Like Shaheen only knew I would be coming for his reception. Yeah. He didn't know I would be coming for Mandy and Barat. So, uh, so at Mandy, when, when, so Mandy was at Shahid Afridi's house, uh, which is in DHA yeah. as well. So it was over there and Shaheen, like I got there, Shaheen came 10 minutes later. He's like, Uzair, why are you that's the thing, right? So the thing about, it, it, it was obviously a great uh, thing, right? And the thing is, the Mandy was a very closed event for them. It was a private event and it was just their family. So obviously you get to meet their families and, you know, extended uh, family uh, as well. But, uh, and one thing that I will mention, you know how when you see Shahid Afridi, his persona and everything, you know, you're like, oh, this guy must be very arrogant and cocky and all that's that. That's what we think. But uh, actually, it's very, he's very, very opposite to that. He's very, very down to earth, very humble. And he's very simple, right? Yeah. A lot of the time, yes, when you do see him, you're like, oh, he's like this. But no, and you know how you earlier mentioned, uh, what's the difference? A lot of these guys are very simple, or most of these guys are very simple. Yeah. They're very basic. They're yeah. they, like obviously they, they are superstars, but when you are with them and they know you, like you can't really tell this guy is that guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They're that simple. And I'm talking about Pakistani players in particular. 
Like Pakistani players, when it comes to their humbleness and all of that, they they are extremely humble. Yeah. And for example, when when you look at for uh, or compare, I'm not even comparing them. When you look at Canadian players, they're a lot more arrogant and cocky than Pakistani players. Yeah, I guess because Still why they're here, but arrogance why they're here. I think Canadian players also grew up with the NBA, and the NBA has a cocky well, culture. The, they're not NBA. Come I know. On. I, I, I not, totally get it. Like, I, you're saying <laughs> Sri Manta is LeBron James. <laughs> Come on. I don't want to take any names. <laughs> but all I'm saying is like it's I'll that mindset. Me. It's that like arrogant mindset. And Pakistani players grew up with the Shah Dafri they grew up with Imran Khan, with Imakram as his idols. And then, you know, then you come to like the Babar Azams and all that. They grew up with Shahid Afri as the idols. So that that um hospitality or the humbleness sort of trickles down. Here I think it's the opposite because of who they look up to. They look up to the LBJs, the Steph Curries, the Michael Jordans. And then they have that like mindset that there are that even though if maybe true. they haven't gotten there yet i don't know it's just some little no, bit no that's very true that's a good point i mean they probably don't have good role models sure yeah perhaps. but like all of these guys even shuay malik when he was here right i like uh i knew him like but we weren't that close or whatever but this guy he he's very very humble too yeah right and then i i was in dubai as well and then we met as well so funny thing shuay malik come to my house and uh, we were, he was checking back. He's checking back. He's like, Uzair bhai, ye bat mein le ro. Mainne ka, nahi shuye bhai, mainne. Aap batao kitne paise hai. Mainne ka, mein bheechunga nahi aapko. Kehte hai, aap trade kar lo. Mein do bat jeta hoon, aap ye de do. Mainne ka, mein sode baad hi nahi karta. <laughs> like, literally, I said this. He's like, nahi, 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 aapne, mein jo dhunga inkar nahi karna. And so that, that's how it was, right? You're By the way, I didn't him. take anything yeah, from yeah. him. But he did take the back. For I the record. For the record. Yeah. So it was like, that's the sort of the mindset they come from is what you're saying. A very humble background and and they're down to earth people. All yeah. Of them. Well, it also depends, right? It's a two way street as well. I'm not saying that, oh, I, I'm being like that. No. But a lot of the time, it's also about the company that they surround themselves with. Yeah. Right. For example, you message Shadab or Hassan, Hassan Ali, right? These guys are very, very, you know, they, they're... They're very laid back sort of guys. They're always, you know, joking around and laughing and all those. Like even Fahim Ashraf, right? So these guys are like that. So a lot. They're they're very non serious type of individual. Yeah. So coming back to Shaheen's reception, I mean, you you get to meet all these amazing players all the time because of the line of work that you are you're in, and obviously you, you're a cricket, boxing and cricket fan. Did you have a moment of starstruckness at that reception at all, or were you ever like? oh my God, I can't believe I'm here, that imposter syndrome thing, or were you like, this is amazing, I'm going to enjoy it, and just have a time? Uh, it was definitely latter. Okay. I used to be starstruck right, yeah. in the past, but not anymore. Not anymore, like before, oh, this is, for example, I I had a very good relation, or I still do have a very good relationship with Muhammad Irfan, the tall fast bowler. Yep. So when he was at his peak, when he would message, I would be like, oh, Muhammad Irfan message, right? Yeah. Right? And at that time, I would be starstruck, right? At that time, definitely. And he bowled a spell in uh, CPL, I think. Which Most is, economical spell. Correct. It's crazy And spell. on the way back, he, he when he was coming to Toronto, he's like, there, wait, I'm coming to Toronto. I will come to your house. So on the way back, he came to my house and all of that. So this guy, at that time, I used to be starstruck. But now, no. Now, like, no. Now I, I, I tend to meet these guys a lot more frequently whenever I go to Pakistan or I plan my trip in a way when they are in Pakistan at that time. So given, the, and then we are, you know, constantly in touch with them. So the all. novelty wears off. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it does. I, we talked to Azam, like you're talking yeah. to Muhammad Irfan and like he just got selected in the National T20 squad again. So I messaged him. I was like, yo, congratulations. And he left me a voice note. And I was like, oh my God, Azam Khan is yeah, left me a voice note. Yeah. So for be like, us, it's still a novelty bro. thing. Yeah. Adam, Adam is a very, very, like, for example, I'll, I'll, like you, you mentioned Adam in a story. This guy will always repost. Yeah. hundred percent. Always. Right. And he's like, well, that may, may, may farak and then you, you talk to a lot of these other guys. They're like, nope, I'm not going to mention him. Right. I'm not going to reshare it. So Adam is a different breed. Yeah, to be genuinely. honest, I mean, given uh, what what he is and uh, the background that he has, he 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 is indeed very special. So out of all the players, who's the one that got away? Who's the one that you couldn't secure as a UZ partnership? As, as UZ? If you can take the name, I don't know if if or if I like someone who I wanted and yeah, I couldn't they get. Slipped away. The one that got away. Who would that be? Did you ever pitch to like Babur or Rizwan? 
No, I I have to be realistic. Yeah. I have to <laughs> you be gotta realistic. sell your property. <laughs> yeah, I I I mean, apni izzat apne haath mein, right? I I believe in that. So, For sure. Who was that? Like maybe a player that you were like in touch with, talking final stages fell through. Uh, I know I, for example, not a superstar, but I, I wanted Rohail Nazir to be on UZ. I sent him the stuff and then he changed his, uh, his mind. And now in hindsight, I'm like, good decision, Rohail. <laughs> he was you. using your gloves for a short bit. Hmm? He was he using was. your keeping gloves. Right? He was, he was right. And, uh, he was, he was supposed to use the other stuff as well. And then, uh, he backed out and he got to some, something else. And then I'm like, okay, good luck, man. Well so done. from the bats Who that you've so? brought, um, can you tell a little bit about them? You have three bats. Uh, can, you, can you pick that one up? Yeah. The one on the far right, yeah. So whose bat is that? It says Afridi, but I don't know if it's Shaheen or... No, this is Shahid Afridi. Shahid Afridi, okay, yeah. Lala's bat. This is Shahid so, Afridi. And I mean, the, the thing was, when Shahid Afridi came on board, like obviously he's known as Boom Boom, and then his number 10, and then Afridi... And then I, something very similar to Shaheen, not too off or whatever. Not, you don't want to deviate a lot. So, but oh, but wow. Shaheen's sticker was a lot personal. Uh, Shaheen, so it has a lot. Immediately, personal. Shaheen's sticker is reminiscent of Afridi's, Chai Afridi's sticker, but it has that falcon thing going yeah, on. Yeah, well, that's Shaheen, right? That's yeah. the eagle, right? Yeah. So we, we, we did go back and forth a lot on his stickers in particular. And Shaheen is like, I'm like, you know, Shaheen, you are there. I said, let's make a flagship logo. Yeah. Right? He's like, oh, pay okay. And then I sent him designs and all that. He's like, yes, yes, this is nice, this is nice. And then he replied back. He's like, oh, pay, main jahan circle kar na, idhar ye likhna. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then he had this personal touch, obviously. So, so I'm just looking at it and it says in the middle of Shaheen's logo, uh, it says S heart A, which I'm guessing is Shaheen. And then uh, Shahid Afridi's uh, daughter's is Ansha. Ansha, right? yeah, it is. That's right. so that, beautiful. That's, a, that, that's what he, he, like. The, ben, the mark, the benchmark is too high for guys. So she's yeah. always with him when he's batting. Yeah, well, that's true. She's always with him. Mashallah. Always. Mashallah. Always. Subhanallah. <laughs> that's so, that's so nice. Wow. And then what is the difference in the, in the style of these bats? Are they like the same wood, same willow? Uh, yeah, obviously. Definitely the grips are different. Yeah, but if you look at the profile, it's different as well. Shaheen. You would notice it's the lower middle. Shai the Freedy is more mid middle. Yep. Right. So it's it's just a swell position, right? So if you look at it, Shaheen is lower. So as we were earlier talking, you know, his his bats are low middle, and that's what he prefers. And what's uh, Shai the Freedy's weight? Bat weight. Shai the Freedy. The thing is, he I I used to think, or I initially had the impression that he would be very fussy. Yeah. Right. I sent him bats which had. I asked him, I said, what's your specification? He's like, but it's good, two, 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 nine, two, ten, whatever you want, but balance it. That's it. That's all the, that concise. That's the, all the directors oh, he gives you. The, whatever, he can say five sentences in five seconds anyways, yeah. right? So <laughs> he, he's always in a rush. Yeah. And that, that's what he's like, right? And his bad, he, I thought he would be very picky, very demanding, but no. He, oh, wow. He's definitely not. That's what I'm saying. I, I've seen some of these international players being a lot less demanding than the local uh, Canadian players, for example, obviously. But then, you know, uh, like obviously most of the players on UZ are Pakistani now, uh, Pakistani international players. But then in the past, obviously, there were West Indian players as well. There were Sri Lankan Kimar players. Kimar Roach, Jaden yeah, Seals. Kimar Roach and Jaden Seals when they defeated Pakistan. So there, there are a bunch of, you know, earlier you mentioned, for example, the moments, right? Yeah. There are a bunch of moments. For example, Nassim hit those sixes. Aisha Nassim had hit a six in, uh, I think, I don't know where. It was Asia Cup, I think, where she had hit a six in the last over and Pakistan won, used that bat. Yep. Qasim Akram became the only under-19 player to take five wicket and score 100. Yeah. And he scored a fastest under-19 uh, 100 as well. Playing a use that right? bat. Use that bat. And then there, there are so many female, uh, for example, the first ever Pakistani female cricketer to score an ODI World Cup 100, use that bat, right? Kimar Roach uh, and Jaden Seal had a partnership. West Indies defeated Pakistan, right? So, so there are moments like that, like uh, Sri, Lan- sorry, Sri Lankan spinner, uh, Amber Dilia scored a 50 against England. Yeah. So, so those are, so basically use that is starting to get it's, it's name printed on history 
And how does I that make so. you feel then? I honestly like you it a lot of the time I feel like it's a gamble. Yeah. Right. You you can't really it's not like you you're placing your bets or anything. Like sometimes it just happens, right? It it feels good, but I, I try not to think too much about it. I, I don't get it uh I don't let it get to my head. Right. The and the reason being, for example, if I do let it get to my head, then I feel like, you know, it would deviate my focus and all of that. So I try to avoid that, but I hope I, I stay on that path. The, the last question I have before we let you go, uh the hashtag of UZ is hashtag UZ versus them. Who is them? You sound like DJ Khaled. Everyone. <laughs> they they don't want you to win. Everyone else. Everyone else. Everyone else. It's it's UZ versus everyone else. Whoever like is bowling, whoever is doing whatever. Currently, you said, what other equipments are you making? You said you guys are making bats and gloves. Are you making the entire kit? Like, could I go to the UZ website right now and buy everything I need for my cricket yes. needs? Yes. Everything. Now, now it's a full range. Initially, it started off in 2019 with bat and then glove. But now it's a full range. Everything. You also have a day job. Yes, Why I don't do. you go to full time on UZ? I, I still actually do enjoy my day job. Really? Yeah, for now. Very interesting. For the time being, I do. Okay, because yeah. like half of us, like he has, he hundred percent has a day job right now. Like I am full into the podcast right now, trying to make this succeed as much as I can. And I guess like we have the leverage that we, there's two of us. So like he can continue doing yeah. his day job and I can continue like giving blood and sweat to this pod. But I always wonder like when people are like entrepreneurs and they're doing really well, most of them or some of them actually continue their day jobs. And so very interesting. Well, I, I, I've recently found a new balance, to be honest. Okay. For the last two years, what I've been doing, I only work on contract in finance. And the last two years, I've not been working in summer. Okay. So summers are off for you. Summers are off. I'm only playing cricket and I'm trying to get myself selected for a UZ local team. <laughs> right. And that's it. And practice. And that's it. Summers are completely off. For last two years, that has been the case. Yeah, and I guess summers is also prime cricket season for it, for your playing it as well. It and is. It is prime cricket season. But to be honest, I I noticed like with all these leaks happening and all of that, there is always some sort of activity going on, right? So it's always a consistent thing. It's not just you know a seasonal. It is a seasonal thing, but obviously you know there are different seasons, different uh, like Australia has a season right now, right? So it it, it does get busy. As long, you know, those leaks are happening and all of that. So it does uh, increase the interest in people. Well, yeah, this has been great. Thank you for, again, making the trip down. This has been uh, uh, a fun conversation. And for, and for the bat nerds in us, like we, we geeked out. <laughs> no, let me, let me know whenever you have any questions. Honestly, I, I'm always up for a chat with, about cricket bats. Yeah. Anytime. I, think, I think people like our fans and our listeners will love this episode because we have a lot of cricket and geeks in our community who listen who like want to be a part of playing the game as well as, as much as following. And this is like a treat for them. Absolutely. 100%. I, I hope so. Yeah, no, I generally. I don't get bored. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your time. I know you drove a long way. We really appreciate that. You came all the way here in, in studio and uh, let's go for dinner. No, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. No I problem. appreciate it. Everything that you guys want for the UZ, uh, the cricketing stuff will be in the description below. Click on the link. Tell him that you've come from oh, our podcast. Give yeah. him the big shout out. I'll look and, after you for sure. Yeah, and then he'll look after you. I think that's good. Yep. That's All good. right. Take care. Have a good night.